What if Ash Ketchum was the one sent back in time in Pokemon Legends Arceus? Could he conquer the Hisui region? Well, I wanted to find out, so I tried to beat Pokemon Legends Arceus playing as Ash Ketchum. But what does it mean to play as Ash? Well, I can only catch Pokemon that Ash has owned, with the exception of a few scripted story catches. This is difficult because not only will I have to beat every battle with Ash's Pokemon, but I'll also have to rely on only Ash's Pokemon to fill my Pokedex enough to complete the game. Overall, I had three main goals. Catch every Pokemon owned by Ash, complete the main story, and defeat the final boss trainer using only Ash's team without overleveling. Could it be done? Let's find out. We awaken and meet Professor Laverton, who looks like he got his Pokemon PhD from a clown college. He asks me if I know what a Pokemon is. Uh, dude, I'm literally a Pokemon master. How can you catch Pokemon so ably when you've only just arrived here? Um, just natural talent, really. Never practiced. Oh, thank God, Dawn, at least there's someone here I know. What? You look to be about 15 or so. Ah, uh, no ma'am, I'm 10 years old and have been for the last 34 years. Dawn, what's with the sassy side eye? I told you, my name's not Dawn! Ha ha ha, classic Dawn. Since Ash has owned all three starters, we can pick whichever. I decided to pick up Rowlet because Ash's Rowlet is adorable. I mean, who could say no to that face? We then begin the long tutorial, but managed to catch a Starly along the way. I did what I could to make my character look like Ash, but this was the best I could do. I've now got some freedom to explore the Obsidian Fieldlands, so I head down to the beach where I'm able to catch a Weasel. To progress further in the game, I need to fill out the Pokedex, so I spammed Leafage with Rowlet and Aqua Jet with Buizel until I had enough points to get my first star. Dawn then challenges me to a battle and... My name is not Dawn! Stop fucking calling me that! But Dawn goes down pretty quickly. A big deadly Cricketune presents itself and lets out its infamous cry. It's pretty strong, but with two flying types on the team, I slapped Cricketune around without too much trouble. While exploring, I came across Ash's long-standing partner Pokemon, Pikachu. After catching it, I grinded some EXP, which allowed Starly to evolve into Staravia. Ash didn't evolve any of the other Pokemon I have, so that'll be my only evolution, at least for a while. We're tasked with calming the noble Cleavor. The Warden Leanne tries to throw hands, but come on dude, that big cowboy hat is scaring no one. Staravia then quickly slaughtered his poor little Gumi. Irida was much tougher though. Honestly, I was not prepared for this battle, as my team does not do well against Ice types. I was down to my final Pokemon, but fortunately, little Rowlet just scraped by. This clears me to tackle the Lord of the Naruto run, Cleavor. He got a few hits in, but was no match for Ash Ketchum and his cannon arm. The grand reward for saving the day is... a handful of common berries. Thanks. Progression is once again blocked by my lackluster Pokedex. It is really hard to accrue points with such a small pool of catchable Pokemon. Regardless, I grinded for about an hour, a significant portion of which was spent trying to feed this oaf of a Snorlax. But eventually, I scrounged enough points together to claw my way to the second star. We're now clear to enter the Crimson Mylands, where we meet this lady who's cosplaying as a Venusaur with that giant plant on her back. Volo then tries to take my lunch money, and this battle really showed how underleveled I was. Togepi's Draining Kiss ruined Staravia, with my Buizel just managing to take it down. Gibble dealt some big damage, but since my team has the numbers advantage, Rowlet was eventually able to finish the job. If you thought I was underleveled for that fight, then get ready for this. Ursaluna has great stats and is a much higher level than me. That bear tore me to shreds like I was Goldilocks. So I had to do some leveling. I grinded mostly against Graveler and Onyx because these were easily handled by Buizel. By trekking all this way on foot, I found my next encounter, Turtwig, who, after a bit more grinding, blossomed into a handsome young Grottle. With an upgraded team, I rematched Ursaluna and had much more luck this time. The next quest has me search for Arizu using Ursaluna's nose, but I've gotta say, she must have some serious stink if Ursaluna can smell her out from the other side of the map. Lilligant moves gracefully, but she was no match for Ash Ketchum's smooth moves. I danced all over it, barely taking any damage in the process. Once again, my underwhelming Pokedex prevents me from moving forward, but it is really hard to fill the Pokedex under these rules. I spent ages trying to catch Snorlax before giving up and focusing on the research tasks that I had access to. 
But after I got hold of some feather balls, I pulled out my sniper and shot Star Raptor out of the sky, eventually catching it. My encounter options were wearing thin, so I set my sights on the Alpha Heracross. This guy is a pest. It's a high level and I was having no luck. It just kept slaughtering my team. So I decided on a new approach. I left Heracross for now and focused on improving my Star Raptor research. This whole process is really painful as it's got a bad attitude and ignores my commands. But I realized I could get big points by catching more Star Raptor. It was a little tedious, but I eventually caught five of them. With my squad of Star Raptor, who all hate and disobey me, I tried to tackle Alpha Heracross in a rematch. Since I only have Pokeballs, my odds of catching it are super low. It took me several tries, but eventually I had a little luck and got my hands on Heracross. I then set my sights on Snorlax. It gave me some trouble earlier, but I now had a much stronger team. Before long, I was able to add Snorlax to the roster. And so, we now had a pretty banging collection of Ash's Pokemon. It had taken about three and a half hours of grinding, but with these new catches, we'd collected just enough research to claim the rank of three stars. Now we can progress to the Cobalt Coastlands. Here we meet Polina and her fluffy good boys. So what brings you to the Cobalt Coastlands? Honestly, I came here solely to pat your dogs. She tells us that to travel across water, we'll need to speak to Iskan about riding Basca Legion. He lives in a place called Apom Hill, and this may come as a shock to you, but I can actually catch Apom here. I caught a ton of these and spent ages working on its dex entry. Iskan tells us that the way to Basca Legion's heart is through its stomach, but to prepare its favorite snack, we're required to catch a Duskwox, who will be cooking it, I guess. So I went out and caught one before Iskan, the absolute madman, has Dusclops use Dark Pulse on the food. After throwing some food in its face, Basca Legion submits to my will and the devastating power of my flute. But just as things are going smoothly, we're ambushed by the most cartoony villains I've ever seen. Seriously, this clown trio makes Ed, Ed and Eddie look like masterminds. Of course, it's obviously my job to stop them. After a short surf, I reached Fire Pit Island. Here we meet generic villains 1, 2, and 3 who I'll have to beat back to back. Star Raptor went wild, removing a Bomber Snow with close combat, followed by Toxicroak with Air Slash. The last of these fights is against Charm, who leads with Rhydon. But a switch into Buizel lets me drown it like it's a noble Arcanine. Gengar does throw a counter punch, but two bites from Grottle are enough to secure the win. And as thanks for all my hard work, Growlithe evolves into Arcanine, gets struck by lightning, and tries to eat me. Well, okay then. My first attempt at quelling Arcanine was very rough, but on my second attempt, I hit a nice rhythm and had that big puppy sitting, staying, and rolling over in no time. Oh, Ash, I wasn't much use, was I? Yeah, and in fact, no one else around here is doing anything. Good morning, good sir, who came from the sky. Well, finally, some goddamn respect for the Pokemon Master around here. The guy whose name sounds like an awful superhero, Adaman, then challenges me to a battle, but this was over very quickly, with Star Raptor embarrassing him in front of the whole town. Things were going great, until I was once again put in Pokedex Purgatory. Before I can proceed, I'll need the rank of 4th star, which is a whopping 2,000 points away. <sighs> Back to grinding. On the plus side, since I can now ride Basca Legion, there are a few extra Pokemon that I can grab from earlier areas. First up is Chimtra, found on an island in the Obsidian Fieldlands. I spend about an hour catching a ton of these, perfecting its research tasks, evolving them into Monferno, and then perfecting its research tasks. Once those two were perfected, I evolved Monferno into one of Ash's most iconic partner Pokemon, Infernape. This whole process yielded a stack of points, leaving me with about 800 to go. My next stop was the Crimson Mylands, and the target was my other Sinnoh starter, Turtwig. I'd already caught one, but still had plenty of research tasks to go. And so, I once again went on a catching spree, filled out the monotonous research tasks, evolved my little turtles into Grottle, perfecting its research, before evolving into Torterra. This was another one and a half hour grind, and if I haven't made this clear yet, this was painfully repetitive. But eventually, I collected enough research points and demanded the 4 star rank from Silene. We're now clear to head to the Coronet Highlands with our guide and all-round good guy, Ingo. Melly's here too, but he's about as likeable as chronic back pain. I can't wait to slap you around. Once inside the Wayward Cave, it's here that I'm able to catch a gibble. All jokes aside though, a shark that lives on land is straight nightmare fuel. 
The walking toothache Melly then returns, and oh boy did it feel great to slap him around with Heracross. Good guy Ingo refers to Melly as a lively character, which is really just a polite way of saying I hate that prick. Speaking of good guys, Volo's here too. He's a real stand-up operator who would never do any wrong. Okay, I have to talk about this quest. So they're trying to build a new base camp, but apparently the entire construction process has been stopped because this tiny little bronzor is in the way. Look at him! He's not hurting anybody! Leave him alone! Before going any further, we'll have to defeat Ingo in battle. Big Papa Bear Snorlax was able to squash Machoke and the Tangler that follows, but his Gliscor Ace is a demon. It got four attacks in a row! Why? How? I still don't understand the battle system. Anyway, a few brave birds from Staraptor finish the fight, and my reward is… imprisonment in this tiny basket. Yay? While climbing cliffs, I came across my next encounter and one of my favourite Pokemon, Gligar. Who would have thought a flying scorpion could be so damn cute? Melly is still on his quest to be the biggest pest in the region, alongside Paris. Being the coward that he is, Melly whipped out three Pokemon at once and my team was pretty battered. Torterra came really close to removing Skuntank, but fell just short. From here though, Heracross was able to sweep Melly's whole squad one after another. Thankfully, we won't have to deal with Melly's bad attitude or ridiculous egg hat anymore. Although we do have to deal with an angry noble Electrode. I was cruising at the beginning of this fight, barely taking any damage. But as soon as I lost my rhythm, I was getting slapped around. I was an inch from death, but honed in my spidey senses to barely claim the win on my first attempt. But little did I know, an even bigger boss was looming just around the corner. The Pokedex. I'll need the 5 star rank before proceeding, and I'm running out of Pokemon to catch, so this will be another grind. I targeted Gligar first, as I knew that I could rack up a lot of research points quickly. After catching an absolute boatload of these little guys, I was able to do three research categories at once. Stun Gligar with an item, defeat it in battle, and do so using Ice-type moves. This also helped me farm Razor Fangs, meaning once I'd filled out Gligar's research, I could evolve them to obtain several Gliscor. This whole process took around 90 minutes, but I still needed plenty more points, and next on my list was Gumi. It spawns in the Crimson Mylands, but I wasn't able to catch it on my first visit since you need Basque Legion to access it. So I went about catching Gumi while feeding them berries and making sure they didn't notice me to tick off several research categories at once. Alpha Sligu also spawns here, and I made sure to catch a few of these. Once I found some rainy weather, these Sligu could then evolve into Gudra. It was at this point that I realised something. I'd forgotten a Pokemon. All this time, I had neglected Ash Ketchum's legal dad, Mr. Mime. It spawns in the first area, so I went back and quickly grabbed it. After gaining a ton of research on the Pokemon I'd just caught, as well as a few extra points from our other Pokemon, I had finally done it. After a three and a half hour grind, I walked into Silene's office, spat in her face for wasting my time, and obtained the five star rank. I can now progress, but Dawn stops me for a the last fucking time! My name's not fucking Dawn, you idiot! Anyway, Dawn's team isn't too much trouble. Snorlax sits on Mr. Mime for an easy KO, Pikachu electrifies Staravia until it's cooked all the way through, and Gliscor hard counters Pikachu, sending it to the grave with a mud bomb. Finally, I can enter the Alabaster Icelands, and oh my god, it's freezing here. My nips are rock solid, and I bet they could even cut diamonds right now. Almost immediately, I spot my next encounter, Snow Run, which I quickly catch. Just a few minutes later, I find its evolved form, Glalie, which I also catch and add to my squad. We then meet this guy who's pretty jacked, but his roid rage kicks in right away as he demands a battle. But I quickly put him in his place. Right before his very eyes, Infernape melts his ice Pokemon down to nothing with a few flamethrowers. For whatever reason, our Pokemon that is purpose-built to climb can't climb this particular rock, so we need a Braviary. And to get one, I'll have to hunt down and beat up this kid. Hmm, I could just push her off this rock and Grand Theft Bird this Braviary right now. Ah, damn it, she's gone. Anyway, like the flightless fool that I am, I had to walk. But it's not all bad, because on the way, I was able to find Lucario. But catching this beast is another story entirely. It was ripping my team apart, breaking out of every ball, despite being low HP and paralysed. I was down to my last Pokemon, but had some luck at just the right time, allowing me to catch Lucario. And a short time later, I was able to catch Mini Lucario, Riolu. Once I finally catch up to Sabi, she whips out three Pokemon at once. 
Snorlax is able to take care of the henchmen, Electrovire, and Magmortar. Following that, Gudra drowned Rhyperia with Water Pulse for the win. Big Bird Braviary wants a piece of me too, but Pikachu hit him with 10,000 volts of Thunderbolt straight to the jaw. I fried his brain so much that it now lets me ride it. After flying my squawking G6 onto the icy rock, I grabbed the eternal ice, clearing me to quell the final noble lord, Avalug. But before that, there was one more of Ash's Pokemon that I wanted to hunt, Gengar. Gengar scares me, not in a haunted sense, but more so by how rare it is. Basically, there are two ways to get Gengar. Number one, find a common haunter, evolve it with the link cable, and boom, easy Gengar. But Ash never had Haunter, so I can't catch Haunter even though it would be a much easier option. Since I'm a sucker for pain, I'm left with the only alternative, space-time distortions. Gengar only spawns with ultra rarity in space-time distortions in the first area, and so I had to wait, and wait, watching space-time distortions go by without seeing my spooky target. But then I finally found one. After all that waiting, I watched Gengar vanish before my very eyes. But determined, I didn't give in, and after another two hours, I finally got another shot. This time, I caught Gengar, and my Ash Dex was almost finished. But for now, it's back to that absolute unit of an Avalug. This isn't my first rodeo, though. Since I already knew Avalug's attack patterns, I was able to stay within the bomb throwing distance and gradually chip it down between attacks. Overall, this ended up being one of the easier boss fights. With that, all five noble lords had been quelled and it was time to go home. Or maybe not. So I get kicked out of the clan and I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty bitter about it. Like, I'm almost ready to go all Itachi on my own clan if you catch my drift. Honestly, I can't tell if Dawn is horrified or ecstatic with this development. You cowards haven't seen the last of Ash Ketchum! But luckily, there's one person who would never betray me, my good friend Volo. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. We get a choice between Adaman and Irida, but there is zero chance that Ash Ketchum, being the ladies man that he is, doesn't choose Irida. So that's the way I went. Long story short, we visit the three lakes and build the red chain before heading back to the village. But turns out the commander couldn't wait 15 minutes because he's already on his way to Spear Pillar, the absolute clown. Wow, they even had furries back then. Good to know. After a short climb up Mount Coronet, Benny betrays us and whips out his transformation jutsu. Benny leads with a Miss Magius, and one crunch from a hungry Snorlax is enough to take it down. Sneasler is next, but Gliscor removes it with a mud bomb. Gardevoir does set up a Calm Mind though, which is very dangerous. With this power boost, Gardevoir finishes off Gliscor and Pikachu, but from this range, Glalie can finally take it down in two turns. Last is Gallade, who quickly removes both my Glalie and Heracross. I was down to only Infernape, but an Agile-style Flamethrower gave me two consecutive turns, which bought just enough time to give me the win. Having barely scraped by that fight, I now had an even bigger one against the Commander himself. He's decked out in crazy armor, but I'm Ash Ketchum, baby. I'm covered head to toe in plot armor. Kamado's lead is a Braviary, which isn't great for me, so I immediately switch into Glalie for a better matchup. An Ice Shard, followed by Icicle Crash, gets the job done. Golem's next, but it gets a similar treatment with the same combo, although Glalie did finally succumb to Stealth Rock in the process. Pikachu paralyzes Clefable, before switching to Gliscor lets me land big damage with a Poison Jab. After withstanding a Psychic, another Poison Jab on the next turn sends Clefable back to the moon. Last up is Kamado Snorlax, so I sent out my own for an epic showdown. Despite the level disadvantage, my Snorlax reigns supreme with a few double edges sealing the win. Told you, my plot armor is unmatched. So Palgear emerges, and Irida is just forced to watch as I take ownership of her god. Pikachu, I choose you! Oh. After catching Palkia and crafting the Origin Ball, we once again head to Spear Pillar for a final showdown with Dialga. It undergoes a Super Saiyan transformation into its mech horse form, and this thing looks cursed. But I hit him with my signature plot armor Razzle Dazzle to finish it off on the first try without much difficulty. With Dialga captured, the main story had finished, but I wasn't done yet. I still had to complete my Ash Dex, and there was still the final boss trainer to tackle. For the Ash Dex, the remaining Pokemon are the starters that I didn't pick. Fortunately, now that I've completed the main game, Professor Lavaton gives me these. With that, I'd gotten Cyndaquil and Oshawa. 
I then spend the next few hours working on completing my ash decks, getting everything to level 10 by grinding research tasks in the first area. Eventually, I was able to evolve Cyndaquil into Quilava, meaning that I'd now obtained every available Pokemon of Ashes. I'd grinded so much that the research tasks with unreported data number stopped going up. It had taken an eternity, but with that, I'd completed my Ash decks with every one of Ash's Pokemon caught, and with their research at level 10. And in the process, I'd also gained the 6 star rank. And so, only one task remained, defeating the final trainer boss. Once I had all of the elemental plates, I headed to Spear Pillar alongside Volo, my good friend who would never betray me. Right? Right? Ah, damn it. Volo leads with Spiritomb, and I go with my trusted partner, Pikachu. I prepared for this matchup, teaching Pikachu play rough, but I missed. I did manage to hit it on the next turn though, burning Volo's full restore. Although, my luck did not get any better, missing yet another play rough before eventually getting Spiritomb low again. Volo has other ideas though, and switches into Roserade, so I do the same and go with Heracross. An area lace barely falls short of finishing Roserade before Volo switches again. I went for Bulldoze, thinking it would be enough to KO Arcanine, but I wasn't even close and my beloved Beetle went down. But this is where Infernape really shines. I had enough turns up my sleeve to set up a strong style bulk up, boosting both my offense and defense. On the next turn, one muck punch to that puppy's jaw sent it packing. Garchomp is a huge threat, but due to my stat buffs, I comfortably live in Earth Power. The damage is irrelevant though, as two consecutive drain punches can take Garchomp down while recovering all of my HP. Next is Togekiss, and this isn't a great matchup for me. I wanted to preserve Infernape, so I switched into Snorlax who did big damage with Ice Punch. With Togekiss low, it's safe to bring Infernape back out and to finish the job with Muck Punch. Spiritomb returns, but a flamethrower finishes it off. Next is Lucario, which can be threatening, but Infernape has a really strong matchup here. After setting up another bulk up, one drain punch finishes it off. Last is the battered and bruised Roserade, and a quick switch into Gliscor allows me to finish Volo's team. Well, until he whips out Giratina, which I'll have to defeat twice without any healing in between. Pikachu plays a crucial role here, and that is... taking the first attack on the chin and meeting its death. Thank you for your sacrifice, Pikachu. I've only got four Pokemon left, but three of them have some form of offensive coverage against Giratina. I sent Lucario out, and my plan was to buff my stats with Bulk Up before taking it down with Dragon Pulse. It did big damage, but Giratina then moved three times in a row, crushing Lucario. I put my faith in Snorlax to finish things off with a crunch, but once again fell short. If I was going to beat Giratina the second time, I'd need Snorlax to be in a better position. So I used Rest to recover some HP. But this did not work out, as Snorlax was fast asleep and died in the process. At this range, an Ice Fang from Gliscor easily finished Giratina off, but I now had to contend with a full power, Origin Form Giratina. This was a disaster. I only had two Pokemon left, one being Infernape, whose fighting moves make it pretty much useless here. All I could do was click Ice Fang on Gliscor and hope for the best. I landed two in a row, bringing Giratina to just below half HP. But on the next turn, Ash Ketchum activated his plot armor, with Shadow Force missing. And then on Giratina's next attack, it missed again. This gave Gliscor a big enough opening to land the final blow with Ice Fang, finally finishing off Volo's insane team. With that, I'd completed as much of Pokemon Legends Arceus as possible while playing as Ash Ketchum. And now, it was time for Arceus to send me home to modern day Pallet Town. Right? Right? Thanks for watching. For more Pokemon content, jump into this video. If you want to support the channel, all that I ask is that you like the video and leave a comment to show YouTube that you enjoyed the video. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.